Uh, we are out and about with the show this week because Manchester uh, shows the biggest growth in our uh, listening and viewing figures for GB News, so thank you. And uh, we've met a lot of you who uh, watch GB News and listen to GB News, and uh, so we want to get out and find out a bit more about you. Yes, so Bradley Harris has been going on a bit of a tour of all of the best spots around the city in case, just like me, you don't know all of those best bits. So, Brad, where, have you, where are you taking us now? Yeah, morning both. Do you know what? I really, really enjoyed this tour so far. Just come from Old Trafford Stadium, just across the Manchester Ship Canal in Salford Keys. And I've come to what I think is a bit of a hidden gem. I've lived in Manchester for seven or so years and I've not come here before. John Constantine is my tour guide and taxi driver who's been with us this morning. John, where are we? Well, this is an area called Hume. And you can see with the skyscrapers in the background there that this was just to the south of the city and this is where the university and the residential area meet. But Hume was a real residential area, big Irish population in Manchester and this was the main Irish area. And then with the slums clearances of the 1960s and 1970s, this area was demolished and rebuilt and then demolished again and it's been rebuilt again, driven by local people who, with the houses that they wanted to live in. But this area that we're in now is called Hume Park. And Hume Park, very valuable green space in the industrial areas because Manchester, as you may have noticed when you've been in the city, doesn't have many parks or gardens because the value of the land is commercial and Manchester's industrial heritage didn't sort of agree with parks, you know, because if you said to a wealthy businessman, build us a park, he'd just laugh and go, <laughs> parks don't make money. So this then, it was all about the money. But Hume Park then is a really valuable green space. So as we look around the park, you might notice something, Brad, that you've was, never seen before. Well, I was going to say, should we take a walk through the park and actually kind of walk over? Because in the distance there, there is a... Well, it looks like the, the front grill of a, a Rolls-Royce. This is a Rolls-Royce grill because in Hume was where, was where the first Rolls-Royce factory was. So Henry Rolls met Charles Royce in the uh, Midland Hotel in Manchester and then they signed the contract to make the luxury car. So remember, Brad, when you're driving your Rolls-Royce <laughs> about, it's a, it's a Manchester company. And this then is to signify the... Uh, the Rolls-Royce factory in Hume. Well, look at this. It's a sculpture, and it says on this plaque, this sculpture marks the site of the original Rolls-Royce factory. It was inspired by memories of local people, many of whom worked at the factory and was commissioned as part of the Manchester Coming Home Millennium celebrations. So I did not go. know this was here. Well, well, why didn't you know, Brad? It's, it's a hidden seven, gem. seven or eight years you've been here, Brad, and you've not, you didn't know it was here. But when we drove past it, you went, oh, John, wow, what's that? And this is then... So this is the surprises that are all around Manchester, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Manchester's like a huge museum, isn't it, with all these different areas and aspects and how Manchester then has changed the world. So do you have a convertible Rolls-Royce or just the hard top? Oh, do you know, I'm taking my pick at the moment, <laughs> but, I mean, uh, who knows what kind of... I mean, my car at the minute is no, no, nothing like a Rolls-Royce, I wish. Um, <laughs> but what is really striking is that you've got this park here, John, once the factory, the first factory of Rolls-Royce, you know, roll on years later, in the distance... Huge skyscrapers. Huge skyscrapers. Now, this shows how Manchester is moving into the future. So cities are growing up, not growing out. So young people like yourself, Brad, like to live high up in the air, don't they? <laughs> and then just come down and you've got all the facilities of the city centre on your doorstep. So with the tram system that runs around Manchester, it makes it very easy to get around as well, doesn't it? So this then are all the aspects of city centre living. Now, I did um, say that we were going to go and see the University of Manchester. That is actually where we were going to go. But like John said... We were just driving past you, weren't we? And then we stopped off because it caught my eye. I thought, oh, there's a, a bit of a green patch there. We don't see many green spaces yeah. in Manchester. We stopped off here. But the, the University of Manchester, yeah, it's not really just, that far just, away, is it? Just around the corner, yeah. So in Manchester city centre and the university, there's no gap between the two. And you like this story, don't you? Why it's very popular with the students? Because being a student is very thirsty work, as you know yourself, <laughs> Brad. I know too and well. <laughs> the, <laughs> And the, all the facilities of the city centre are on your doorstep. So there's lots of pubs and bars, isn't there, for the poor students to rehydrate themselves after a hard day of studying. So how it all fits in together with the university, the industry and all the different aspects of the city. It's fabulous, isn't it? It really is. And I know that later on we are going to be doing some thirsty work. We're going yes. to be visiting <laughs> a pub, the old Nag's Head. So uh, Well, it's getting about time for you to have know a what? drink, isn't it? It is. Brad? Tenton, yeah. It's usually my time when we get a pint. So should we go and grab one? We'll go now. We're going to go off and get a pint, guys. We'll see you there in the next hour. I, want, I wondered what was taking you so long, Bradley. You've definitely normally got a pint by this time. <laughs> we'll catch up with you in the pub in a bit.
Yeah, Thanks, listen, Bradley. And it's only 10 to 9. It's only 10 to but he's 9. But he's got history on all of this. He does. He's got form he does. on all of this. Um, good to uh, see around uh, Manchester itself there with John the taxi driver. And